this example, we're going to use Excel to take a whole bunch of different costs for a hypothetical firm and um, figure out how to decompose those costs into fixed costs and variable costs. And we'll find the average costs and the marginal costs, basically all of the different cost things that we can calculate for a firm. And then we'll combine that with the demand for this hypothetical product and we'll figure out how many things this company should make to maximize their revenue and to maximize their profit. Um, so let's go ahead and do this with Excel. If you look at this on this page for the resources page, um, there is an Excel file that you can download that has um, a whole bunch of information already in it. So go ahead and download that and we'll get started. Um, so let's switch to that screen. So you should have an Excel file that looks like this. So this is a hypothetical firm that specializes in chocolate milk. Um, that's what they produce. Um, and their ingredients are milk and sugar and chocolate powder. They need to use a spoon and a pot and a refrigerator as part of their equipment for making this thing. And so um, basically what we have are a whole bunch of values here showing the different costs for creating different quantities of chocolate milk. We'll pretend this is gallons of chocolate milk. It doesn't really matter what the quantity is here. So if they want to make 10 gallons of, of milk, um, they'll spend $110 on milk, they'll spend $27.50 on sugar, $5.50 on chocolate powder. Um, they have a spoon already, they have a pot already, they have a fridge already. So that's what we have here, um, are these different costs that they have to deal with. So what we want to do is figure out which of these things are fixed costs and which of these things are variable costs. Um, and we can actually add these up and we want to figure out what the total fixed costs are. So we'll say TFC for total fixed costs and then total variable costs or TVC. Um, so our fixed costs in this situation are things that do not change in price as you create more things. Um, so if you look here, um, if we make no chocolate milk, we don't actually need to buy any milk or sugar or chocolate powder, but we do need to pay for the spoon and pot and fridge. And so in this instance, the spoon and the pot and the fridge are all fixed costs. Um, those are the same regardless of how many things we make. So we're just gonna add those three cells together. So in the formula here, we'll just say equals E2 plus F2 plus G2, and we'll press enter. And then we'll just drag this down so it includes the fixed costs for all of these different quantities. So it's going to be $20 all the way down. Variable costs are things that change in price um, depending on how many things we make. So that's going to be our milk and our sugar and our chocolate powder. Those change depending on how many things we make. So we can do the same formula here. We're going to say equals. This is going to be equal to milk plus, not quantity, equals milk plus sugar plus chocolate powder. So those three things. And if we drag this all the way down, we'll have total variable costs all the way down to a quantity of 10. Okay, so we have our total fixed costs. We have our total variable costs. Now we just want to know the total cost of producing all of this stuff. So the total cost is easy. It's just adding the fixed costs to the variable costs. So we just say equals total fixed cost plus total variable cost. And we hit enter. So it's $20 to create no milk because of the fixed costs. And if we drag this all the way down, we can see by the time we get up to 10 milks, it's going to cost $163. Um, and then we, it increases as you go up, which makes sense. Okay, so what we want to do, though, is look briefly at what is causing the change in these costs. Because um, the fixed costs are the same the whole way down. Um, but then we have variable costs that are increasing and, some, and the total cost is increasing. So we want to see what is causing this total cost to, to go up. So what we can do is do something called cost decomposition. We can take this total cost and decompose it into fixed and variable costs. And we can actually graph it. So if we click on the header here for total fixed cost and drag down to the bottom of total costs, we're going to plot these three columns. If you go up to insert and then we want to insert a line graph for these three lines, and it should look something like this. Um, the only issue here is if you look at the x-axis, it says one 
even though that's technically zero. That's because it's just going by row number. It's not going by the actual value over here for quantity. So it goes from one to 11 instead of zero to 10. Um, the way we can fix that is if we right click on the axis and we say format or we say select data, there it is. We can change the axis labels here where it says horizontal axis labels. We can click here and tell it to be this zero to 10 and then press enter and then press okay. And now it should show zero to 10. Okay, so we'll add a title just so we know what's going on here. And we're gonna call this decomposition of total costs. So if we look here, the gray line is our total cost. So as we make more stuff, that's gonna get more and more expensive. Um, that is driven by two things. It's driven by the blue line and the orange line. The blue line is $20 all the way across. That's, it's just kind of raising the price by $20, regardless of how many things we make. And then the variable cost is going up as well. And so we can see that it, this gray line exists because we're basically adding the blue and the orange lines together. And that's what's creating the, the, the gray line here. So the reason total costs get more expensive over time is not because of fixed costs. It's because of the variable costs. So as we make more and more stuff, it gets more and more expensive. So that's what that is showing there. Um, cool. So we have our total costs. Now we want to look more carefully at these total costs. We want to figure out the marginal cost, how much it costs to make one additional gallon of milk here. Um, so to do that, we'll make a new column called marginal cost. And to figure out the cost of making one additional thing, we just have to subtract um, the previous value from the current value. So we can't figure that out for this first um, row because we don't know like negative one gallons of milk. That's not possible. So we're going to skip that and we're going to come here instead. So we're going to say moving from $20 to $22.60, how much of a change is that? So we're going to say equals 22.60 minus 20 or that previous value there. So the marginal cost of going from zero gallons of milk to one gallon of milk is $2.60. And if we drag this down, we can see the marginal cost going up. So if you're going from nine gallons of milk to 10 gallons of milk, it costs $23 to make that jump, or it costs $26 to make that jump. So that, that's what this is showing here, is just increasing as you make more stuff. The cost, the marginal cost is getting more expensive. Um, and that's because the, the variable costs are going up. Um, you're spending more money on the raw ingredients, and so it becomes more costly to make stuff. So there's our marginal costs. Another thing we can calculate is the average costs, or the average fixed costs and the average variable cost. So the way to do this is you take the fixed costs and divide it by the number of stuff or the number of things that you're making. Um, here at zero, we're not making anything and we can't divide by zero. So we're going to skip that row. Instead, we're going to say um, equals our fixed cost, which is this $20, divided by the number of things um, we're making or the quantity, which is this very first column here. So 20 divided by one or H3 divided by A3. So if we press enter there, um, so our average fixed cost, if we're only making one gallon of milk, is going to be $20. As we drag this down, though, it should decrease substantially. Because now, like if we're making 10 gallons of milk, we're still just spending $20 for our fixed cost, but that is spread over all 10 gallons of milk instead of just one. And so our fixed cost, the average fixed cost, goes down substantially. Average variable cost, we can calculate the same way. We just say equals the total variable cost divided by the quantity, which is this very first column there. And if we drag that down, it'll show us the average variable cost. And you'll notice here, this is actually increasing um, because again, the total variable cost is going up. We're spending more money on ingredients and so it becomes more expensive to create this stuff. And then that gets spread out over these different um, variable or the quantities of stuff that we're making. So that's the average variable cost. The last thing we can calculate is the average total cost. Um, we can do that a couple different ways. We can either do um, total cost divided by the quantity, 
or we can just add these two and say average fi co fixed cost plus average variable cost. It should be the same. Um, we'll just do equals total cost divided by quantity, which is over here, and hit enter. So there's our 2260, and we drag that down, and there's our average total cost. Neat. Okay, the last thing we can do here is we'll make another graph, just like we did here when we looked at the decomposition of total costs. We want to look at the decomposition of the average costs. We want to see what is driving these different trends in average costs. And we'll also stick the marginal cost on there because we can and why not. So we're going to select here from marginal cost down to average total cost. We're going to go to insert and we're going to insert a line graph so we get all four of these lines. And then again, if you notice the x-axis, it's wrong. It starts at one and goes to 11. That's because it's just basing it on rows. It's not basing it on the actual value. So if we come and right click and say select data, we can then tell the horizontal axis labels. If we click on this little icon, it will let us come and select from zero to 10. So it'll just show those numbers instead of one through 11. And we hit okay. And that should update, there it is. And we'll call this decomposition of average costs. So this is more interesting than the decomposition of the total costs because you have all of these different lines moving in different directions. So if you look at the average fixed costs, those go down substantially as you make more stuff. And then they essentially get down to almost zero near the end here. They flatten out. That's because if you're going to make like a thousand gallons of milk, given your one spoon and your one pot and your one fridge, um, that $20 is going to be spread over the thousand gallons. And so that's going to be super cheap. So average fixed costs go down substantially over time. Um, the average variable costs, however, this gray line, they go up over time. It becomes more and more expensive to make this stuff. And so if you look at the average total cost, this yellow line, it's going down and then it kind of flattens out and then it goes up. And in the lecture, we talked about this. This is the example of economies of scale. As you're going down this yellow line, it becomes cheaper to make more stuff. If you're moving from one to two gallons, it's actually cheaper to make uh, an additional gallon. If you're moving from two to three, it's still cheaper to make one additional gallon. If you're moving from three to four, that's pretty much the same. Like if you're doubling or going from three to four, you're not, it's, it's basically the same number of inputs. As you're moving from seven to eight though, it's going to become more expensive to make the eighth gallon and then even more expensive to make the ninth gallon. Um, and so you can actually see that with the marginal cost, this blue line, that's increasing as you increase the quantity. It becomes more and more expensive to make the thing. Um, and so we can see all of those different costs here in this graph, um, which is neat. So we'll move that down. Okay, so next we need to figure out the revenue this company can get from selling milk and how much milk they should make if they want to maximize their revenue and maximize their profit, um, given how much it costs to make all of this stuff. So if you look at the bottom of, of this Excel sheet, there's another tab here that says demand and prices. So if you go there, um, this is the demand for um, different quantities of milk based on some fake survey. So one like one person out there is willing to pay $50 for a gallon of milk. 10 people are willing to pay $5. And so that creates our demand curve. Um, we can actually plot this demand curve if we want to see it um, so that we know what this what it looks like. If we select both of these rows or both of these columns here, we can come to insert. This time, instead of inserting a line graph, if we do that, we'll actually get two lines, one going from zero to 10 and one going from five to 55. We don't want that. Um, we want more of like a, um, the way Excel does it is it calls it a scatter plot, but then it'll just draw lines. And so we want quantity on the X axis and price on the Y axis, and it should just give us a single line. So if we come here and say scatter plot with smooth lines, there is our demand curve. Um, so it starts here at 55, goes down to 11. 
um, is where that would continue if we went all the way to zero. So that's our demand for chocolate milk here. It says price, but that's just because that's what it chose by default. So we can just call this demand. Okay, so we've plotted a demand curve. Neat. Um, the next thing we want to figure out is for this company, how much revenue would they get if they sold chocolate milk at these different prices? So we can make a new column here called total revenue. And the way we calculate this, total revenue, the formula for it is just price times quantity. So if they sold 55 or zero gallons of milk for $55, their total revenue would be zero. Um, we can do the math for it. We'll just say equals price times quantity, which will be zero. But if we drag this down, we can see that revenue changes depending on how much um, they're selling. And if we just look at this, we don't have to graph it, but we can see that there is a point somewhere where their revenue is the highest. Um, they're earning $50 if they just sell one, um, one gallon of chocolate milk. If they sell 10, they're also only gonna get 50 because they have to sell it for cheaper. So somewhere here, there's a maximum and it looks like it's in between five and six because at five gallons, they get 150 and at six gallons, they get 150. So I'm assuming at like 5.5, it's gonna be like 155, 153 or something right in between those two where it's gonna be slightly higher. And that, if they wanna bring in the most amount of money, if they wanna maximize their revenue, it's gonna be where that is the highest, where total revenue is the highest. Um, we can plot this to see what it looks like. Um, if we select just this column, we can come to insert and say, insert a line. And it should be that nice curvy line here. Again, the x-axis is wrong because it starts at one instead of zero. So if we right click and say, select data and choose our axis labels as zero to 10 and then press enter and press okay. There we go. So we see, we looked here and we said somewhere between five and six is gonna be the highest revenue that they bring in. So if we look in between five and six here, that does look indeed like it is the case. It's flat there, that's because this is kind of chunky. Um, like each of these things are, are straight lines here. If this was more granular, if we had like um, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 instead of just zero and one and two, um, it wouldn't have such straight segments here and we'd see that it probably goes up probably at 5.5. That's gonna be the maximum to maximize revenue. And that's gonna be the most revenue they can bring in. So that's great. Um, if you are the firm, do you want to create five and a half gallons of milk? Um, do you wanna produce that? Because technically that brings you the most revenue. Um, but it doesn't actually bring you the most profit because it costs you money to make these things. Um, it costs money to make five and a half gallons and it might cost more to make five and a half gallons than it does to make four gallons or three or two. And so if you're trying to figure out profit, um, you're not gonna figure out the correct, um, the ideal amount if you just look at revenue because that does not consider costs. Um, the costs matter. Um, and that influences your profit because your profit is gonna be the revenue minus your costs. Um, if there are no costs whatsoever, then you're gonna wanna produce at 5.5 because that's the most revenue. Um, but there are costs and that's gonna adjust um, how much stuff we want to create. So we need to bring cost into this. So we can make a column here called total cost. Um, we have this information already from the other sheet. We already know the total cost for creating zero gallons and one gallon. So we can actually just use that same data from the other sheets. We'll say equals, and we'll come back to costs here and find the total cost column, which is this 20, and press enter. And if we drag this down, it's gonna pick up all this information from the other sheet here. Um, we can verify like 113.6 is when there's eight. So if we look back at costs and look at total cost, 113.6 is when there's eight. So that worked. So that's the total cost of creating eight gallons of milk. So there's our total cost. The official rule for figuring out the best profit is we want to see where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Wherever those two things are the same is gonna be the maximum profit. 
So right now we don't have marginal revenue or marginal cost. We just have total revenue and total cost. So we need to calculate marginal revenue and marginal cost. So marginal revenue is the revenue you get from selling one additional thing, which again, is just going to be the change. So moving from zero to one is a change of 50. Moving from one to two is going to be a change of 40. And then two to three looks like a change of 30. Yep. Um, so we're just going to do that with a formula instead of looking at it manually. So we're going to skip the first one because we don't know what the price is or what the revenue is at negative one. So we can't calculate that. But we can come to the second one and say marginal revenue, if we're selling one thing, is going to be 50 minus the previous one or zero. And if we drag this down, it should show us the marginal revenue all the way down. And eventually it hits negative. Like we're going to bring in less money after six. Um, we're going to bring in negative money if we're um, selling more stuff because it becomes more expensive. Um, we're bringing in less money. Um, well, it, we have to sell stuff for cheaper prices and sell more. And so you end up um, with $5, for, um, five dollars each for 10 people. And so your revenue starts decreasing. Marginal cost is the other thing we have to figure out because we have to figure out where the two are equal to each other. Um, so to do that, um, we can either, we already calculated marginal cost. It was over on this sheet um, right here. We have marginal cost. So we could either just look at it there or we can calculate it again here by saying 22 minus 20 and then 27 minus 22. doesn't matter. It should be the same. Um, I will just do the other sheet. So we'll just say equals and then come over to our marginal cost and that should be 260. And if we drag this down, then we should end up with our marginal cost column. Okay, so we now have marginal revenue and marginal cost. What we need to do now is find where they are the same. And wherever they're the same is going to be our optimal amount for maximizing profit. Um, so just looking at this, just with, just eyeballing it, 50 is definitely not 2.6, 40 is not 5.2, um, 20 and 10, that's getting closer, 10 and 13, that's pretty close, 0 and 15, that's further away. So the ideal amount is going to be somewhere in here, it looks like. Um, we just need to figure out where exactly. Um, somewhere actually between, yeah, somewhere in this range, between 4 and 5 is going to be the ideal amount. Um, it's really hard to see right here because it's not graphical and this is fairly chunky here. It's just going from 4 to 5 instead of 4.1 to 4.2 to 4.3. So we can actually calculate profit directly and see if we can see any patterns there. So we're going to make a new column called profit using the pi symbol. If you're on a Mac, you can actually type that if you use option P. It lets you type pi. If you're on Windows, Good luck. You have to hold down like alt and then type some weird number and then it'll type it. Or you can go to Wikipedia and search for pi and then copy the letter and paste it in here if you want. Or you can just write profit either way. Um, but I'm on a Mac, so I'll just do that. OK, so to figure out profit, if you remember, the formula for profit is total revenue minus total cost. So if we say equals total revenue minus total cost. So if we're not selling any chocolate milk, we're actually making a negative profit. We're losing $20. And that's because of our fixed costs. It's the cost of the fridge and the spoon and the pot and all of that stuff. Um, so if we drag this down, we'll see that our profit starts going up. We're at 27 and 62 and 84 and then 94. And then profit starts going down to 91, 75, 47. And we start losing more money down here at the low end where everything is cheap and we're selling lots of cheap things. So maximum profit looks like it's about four. Um, so somewhere in between, so it's not quite four. It's going to be like 4.5 or 4.4 or 4.3, somewhere in there is where marginal revenue and marginal costs are going to be exactly equal, and that's going to maximize our profit. So we can look at this a couple different ways. First, let's just plot our profit. Um, so we'll select this profit column and say insert a line chart. And 
We have another parabola here. Again, our x-axis is wrong. Let's fix it. Select data. Our axis labels are from 0 to 10, not 1 to 11. So according to this plot, profit goes up until somewhere here, right after 4, probably like 4.2 or 4.3, and then profit starts going down. So the maximum profit is going to be somewhere like at four-ish gallons of milk if we wanted to make the most amount of profit. And that's interesting because it's different from the revenue. Um, if we look back at the revenue here, if we want to maximize the actual money that we're bringing into the firm, we should be making 5.5 gallons, the very top of here. But if we want to maximize profit, we should actually make a little bit less. And that is because of cost. It costs money to make this stuff. And if we're making more stuff, um, the marginal costs start increasing. And so it starts getting more expensive to make stuff and that cuts into profits. And so you don't want to make it the point where you're, ma where you're maximizing revenue. You want to bring it back a little bit to account for costs. And so that's where we have um, the maximum profit here is going to be like 4.2-ish. Um, we can actually plot these marginal revenue and marginal costs together to see exactly where they intersect and then that will be the optimal quantity as well. So if we select those two columns and say insert a chart with these two lines here and again the x-axis is wrong. This is an annoying thing about Excel. Um, we want our axis labels to be 0 to 10. Enter. Okay. And there it is. So wherever these two things cross is going to be the optimal level of the, the optimal quantity of milk to produce to maximize revenue. And it looks like they cross right before five. So again, in between four and five is going to be the ideal quantity here. Um, given that this is pretty chunky right here, where again, it's just like zero to one to two to three, um, we can't get perfectly exact numbers. Um, in real life, if we did this with a formula, the exact number is like 4.2 something. Um, this is slightly off. Again, it's just because it's very chunky. Um, but this gets us fairly close. Um, so if you're this hypothetical company that produces chocolate milk, your best um, quantity, if you want to make the most amount of money, is going to be 4.24, somewhere in between 4 and 5 gallons of milk. That's going to get you the most amount of money. Um, and that means you should be selling it. If we look over at the price, if we're making four and a half gallons of milk, um, this is really expensive milk. You should be selling it for between 30 and $35. Um, this is super gourmet milk made from like special cows or something. I don't know. Um, but that is the price that you should be selling it for if you want to maximize profit. If the existing price out in the world is lower than that, um, then you should consider shutting down. The rule for shutting down is if the price is lower than your average variable costs, then you should shut down. So the average variable cost at four and five, if we come look at average variable costs, for so here's four and five, it's rows six and seven. Um, average variable cost here is between 650 and 780. So if the price is lower than that, then we should shut down. The price is higher than that, that's good. We're gonna make a profit, so we should be fine with that. So that is how you can um, decompose these different um, fixed costs and variable costs, and how you can then combine that with a demand curve to figure out the optimal uh, profit, the optimal quantity you should create to maximize revenue and maximize profit. And now you are all experts at this.